<clears throat> and okay. And last week we started the introduction of Vega Light, and which is a tool allows you to create validations yourself. And it you, in this case you need to write a little bit of code, but the amount of code you need to write is also quite limited. And also in the sense you can use the same code actually in different programming languages. For example, we are using um, JavaScript as an example, but you can actually using very similar uh, code in Python and even in R. You just need to have to load the correct Vega like library for those languages. Okay, and uh, last week, and um, we mostly talked about a single view specification. And the first one, we talked about how do you, oops, and how do you say create a chart, how to specify the data source, the marker, and what the X and Y axis will be. And we talked a little bit about the layered ones, which is where we stopped the last time, and we will start, continue from there. So we're going to mostly focus on the last two today, and layer the multiple view composition, and the interactions with selections. So if we don't have time to finish these, we might and leave something else and for next week. Um, okay, and just very quickly, and can you see the mouse cursor on my screen at all? Yes, Professor. Okay, okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, and this is the example, so we start stopped last week and which is the first time we actually seen multiple views in the sense and in this validation we're actually creating multiple charts and so we load the data we set the mark we set the x and y coordinates this is all same as before and the last time we first tried to change the color that map that to different weather and we can easily create multiple charts and by map the columns to the weather attributes, then Vega Light would automatically create one chart for each weather value. So this time the text might be a bit small. So you have drizzle, rain, sun, snow, and fall, each for one. And obviously you still have the color mapping here, which is not showing the code. But that's how you get this different color here. Otherwise, you would see the same color for different uh, for all the charts. Okay, and the, in Vega Light, you can do more, more than just this type of multiple charts, or they call and uh, multi views. So we're going to see a few more today. Okay, and then <clears throat> it has something called view composition operators. So the general idea would be you create each chart separately, like the C1 and C2 here, and you somehow combine them. And one way to combine is called the facet. The facet, in a sense, um, you for this one is actually two charts they layered on on top of another, and which is quite similar to the layered ones. So here you have two separate charts and the layer allowed them to add one on top of the other. Okay. Ah, uh, sorry. So these are called the facets. And also the, another way, a different way is called concatenation. So that's essentially an English word for drawing two things together. And it's called concat for short instead of concatenation. And you have two ways. So here you have V concatenation, and the V stands for vertical. Essentially, if you have two charts, it will put one on top of the other, which is like this. And as you probably guessed, and that will be something called horizontal edge concatenation, where you have two pictures, one will be next to the other. So we are only showing the vertical concatenation here. Okay, and then the last one um, is called repeat. And the repeat means you repeat the same variations multiple times, 
but the visualizations are not exactly the same. You make small changes each time. So the I think the example best for this is actually later on we'll see. I can't remember if it's the same, but you have the this scatter plot matrix where you have like a a row and a matrix or made of scatter plots or row and columns. They're all very similar. They all scatter plots for each column and row for each position. You just have a slightly different scatter plot, and instead of creating each or specifying each scatter plot separately. You can use repeat to make this a little bit easier. So this will makes we become more clear, become clearer once we get down to the example. <clears throat> okay, um, to do the first thing, uh, okay, and to do the first thing, we're going to use this and start with this weather examples we had before. Um, so we're going to load the weather data file we're going to using bar in terms of encoding on the x axis we're going to using the data property and its type it says ordinal and but it can also say temporal and here you can say the time unit is months so it will notice it display months instead of say year or date on the x axis and the y axis we can aggregate going to calculate we're not going to display the individual values for each month but we're going to calculate the means of each month and then we're going to do the mean of the precipitation will be the amount of rains and the type will be quantitative okay so this is what you will see and um, i'm going to do that in the in a uh I can do this um, in example here. And can you see the uh, text? Thing? Is the text in the code big yes, enough? You can. Yes? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I'll just make it slightly bigger just in case because it depends on the screen you have. Um, Okay, and this this is a document I set up an earlier and very similar to what we did or at the end of the last lab. So we set up an HTML document. I and actually I find out to say this line is actually very important. You have to say doc type in this HTML, and otherwise your validation would have multiple a very big space between the and between the charts for some reason if you don't have this. And you start your HTML tag, and in the head section, and these are things that complete option though, but these are the ones, the three lines, three Vega Lite files you have to load. So I just copy paste from the examples on the Vega Lite tutorial page, and then I start my uh, actual code. So I defined a div and give it an ID called the viz. So this is where the violation will be later on. I didn't add, add anything extra. And in this particular case, I'm having a data and the URL just called weather.csv. So if I want to do it this way, and uh, the file has to be in the same folder where the file uh, where the HTML file is. As you can see, I'm working on this file called index.html. And uh, so you can see whether the CSV file is here, and that's the value of the file. So I can just load the data this way. Okay. And then I will say mark is bar. Okay. That's similar to what we want to do. Okay. And in terms of encoding, the x axis um, here will be a bit different. So we're going to say, and the field. Let's, let me see what it's called here, just to make sure I'm using the right column name. Otherwise, um, okay, it does call, just call date. So that's correct. Let me close the other one. Ah. Okay, I seems I lost the file. I just need to reopen it. 
Okay, and so the field X okay, is going to be using date. And uh, its type, I'm going to put it at this. Temporal, or in this case, let me see if it's ordinal still work. And then finally, I need to say um, time unit is months. So this is specifying the what we want to show on the x-axis. So in this case, we want the months. You might want to use day or year. It's up to you. And the y-axis, we're using aggregate. We're not using the count. That was used for the histogram. In this case, we're going to be using mean. <clears throat> and then we need to specify the field. Okay. So that's the other thing. And when you write this kind of specification in the online editor, you always have to use the double quote everywhere, both for the key, oops, and, and the value. When you're actually writing the code for the key, not necessarily to, you don't have to have a double quote. For example, if I just use field, it would just work okay. It's, And precipitation, yeah, I think that's. And so now you see it's still a little bit of error here because I didn't close this line with the comma. Okay, and we don't need the column, we don't need the color either. Okay, and so now finally I'll um, link the validation with the element on the page. So. You can say this is a hashtag or the ID equal to this. So that means this element here it has the ID equal to this. And it will bind with this validation specification, say it's a VR spec, which is this one, VR spec here. And okay, and so this way I would expect everything to work fine. So I'm gonna just to use my live server. And so this is the other thing. So because we are located low loading a file locally on your computer and this file and you cannot just open the file directly from the explorer for example this is very small you couldn't see and you can't just double click the index.html file in the explorer and it will refuse to load the file but if you using the live server it will load okay um, so you can see, um, this is the one we got, and um, so almost identical to the one we have. Uh, so it's a little bit small. Let me see. Um, I probably should be able to a bit bigger. Um, Say five hundred. Okay, I was trying to make it bigger, but obviously that's not quite the right. Okay. And we'll just leave that. Looks okay. And by default, it's slightly small, but uh, and it's close enough. So we have the axis, which is the months, and uh, sorry, and the y axis is the average precipitation, which seems a bit small to me. Um, Okay, so it's actually correct. And it's very similar to the other side, the values we got there. Okay, and this is something we were able to do from last week. Now we're gonna move on to say, actually, how do we, can we create multiple views? <coughs> okay, and so we're gonna try the first thing, want to do is called the layering. So layering 
basically means add another chart on top of the current ones. Okay, and uh, so you first you need this layer keywords. What it does say is, and now I'm starting to list a number of layers. So the way each, so the layer itself will become an array. You can see this square bracket here. It starts from here and ends from here. The layer allows you to add multiple charts in, they will be displayed on top of one another. And each of these will be specified just as a single chart, but they will put inside an array. So, so far we have this layer array, but it only has this one chart, which is a bar chart we created earlier. And then you can add a second layer. And this time it's just say only add just one line. This is an average of the precipitation over all the time. So in this case, and it's mark says rule, just like a ruler. And it only encodes the Y value because the X value will be the same because it's an average. And the aggregate will be mean, field or precipitation, and the type will be quantitative. Okay, so this is how you and add another things on top. I mean, this is probably the simplest one. You can also say add a line chart, for example, showing the temperature. That's also possible. And so we're gonna just try to do that. And so you need the first add a layer so the layer including so each inside the layer each element is a chart itself so the chart would including both and the mark and the encoding so all these things need to go to one layer so i'm going to define a layer that'll become an array oh not this one so that will be an array start here and ends here okay and inside array uh, these are the different charts and each of them of themselves will become an JSON object as well okay so the format is slightly nicely then you can see it better so you can see we have the layer <clears throat> and the inside the layer, this is the first layer, which is the same as what we did before. We define the mark as bar encoding as this, or delete this part because we don't need to save some space. Okay. And a similar way, I can add a second layer. And this case, and the mark, as we saw here, will be called a rule. And then the encoding, and it only has a Y encoding. It will be the average and precipitation and the field. So that's the data type or attributes type quantitative. So that's the same as before. Okay, and if I now switch to my browser, and you can see now here, and um, it looks slightly different because by now the default color it gave the rule and um, is black. So that's, I think just different versions, they change slightly different. And um, you can actually have um, multiple ones, for example, you can also plot, for example, and temperature on top of that, et cetera, et cetera. And all you need to do, is just add another layer into this layer array. Okay, and so that's the layer. Okay, now we move on to concat. Instead, instead of, okay, you can have multiple charts, but then it's not a display on top of another, they are displayed side by side. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay, so this is a little bit fast. So what you do is similar, 
And because you're going to have multiple views, you want to put or join can join together, you need to use a keyword. So previously we said the layer, now we say the concat. As we've explained, this is vertical concatenation or say display two chart, one on top of another, kind of like stacking. And then again, because you have multiple views, you are using this square bracket to create an array. And then inside the array, and each of these charts will become a separate JSON object, and you can list as many as you want, and they will be stacked on top of another. So in this case, we have the original precipitation bar chart, and it adds another one which shows the temperature. Professor, do we need to add the data part, the URL that we have? Uh, it's it's added oh. everywhere. Why can't we have it uh, universally? Like once we have it and we call it from somewhere. Okay, and um, yes. So so first, and um, uh, how do I say? And um, you will need the data here. Um, later on, I'm going to show you like um, how do you. Um, I, Actually, I don't think you probably have to have it everywhere, every time, because um, this kind of way in the concatenation, and um, in this particular example, the using the same data file for both validations, but in some other examples, and um, you can using different data files because the two validations doesn't have to use the same validation. So you have to have the data. We'll see more examples later on, for example, if the charts are quite similar, and how do you use the repeat, which allows you to only do it once? Okay, um, let's just do this concatenate first. Okay, and um, so to do this, uh, I mean, I could, uh, for example, and just take this one. Oh, instead of layer, I will say V. Okay, and then inside this, um, I would have to define my data. Okay, um, I could, I mean, if I'm being a bit lazy, I could just add this one here. So this should give me two charts and one is a bar chart like this and the other one is just a line. It works, okay. And you can see, and not very interesting for sure. And you have the second one, which is just showing a line of the average rainfall. Uh, I can potentially say I can Copy paste to the X part as well. Okay. Uh, and then now it's actually showing the average for each month, which is similar to this. Okay. And so that's not, not particularly interesting. Let's do this. Okay. Let's show the temperature now instead of the. So all you need to do is just changing the field here. And from, uh, from the <clears throat> precipitation to temperature. And in this case, we're gonna use temper max. So in here, the, the column name is slightly different. Save. Okay. Ah. And you can see, and here it's because I'm still using the rule, so it's give you just a single line. And I could change here from uh, rule to bar, which will be the same as what we have here. I can change this to a line, which shows a line chart. Okay. And the important thing here is now you have these two charts, and the one is they stacked onto the other one from a one chart. These are not two separate charts. I mean, you can do this as two separate charts and say, 
and then you can still move them around. They will not, this will be one always move around together. Okay, understand. So one thing we notice that here is for this V concatenate or vertical concatenation, we have two charts, but the lots of them actually are quite similar. And in this particular case, the only thing different is the field. So in this one, the field is precipitation. In the second one, the field is temperature or temper max in your example. So if you need, you can imagine if you have to create more than two, you have three or four, you have to repeat many of the other things, which is exactly the same. So to make this a little bit easier, so, oops. And to make this a little bit easier, and Vigalite have something called a repeat, which allows you to not having to writing all the same part for different view in the concatenate. Okay, and so let's have a look at what this, how this works. And so this is the original single chart. <clears throat> so what you need to do is you add this repeat before, and then you say the row will be precipitation, temperature, and the wind. So that means each row in the chart will be um, precipitation, temperature, and wind. And then say in the actual specification, and you have set data, you set the mark, the encoding, and the x-axis, these are all repeated the same for all these three charts. The only difference is on the y-axis, you would say aggregate is mean still the same. And the field here, you say repeat row, so that this is what you define here. Then it will repeat multiple times. And so the type of quantitative is still the same because that's the values for the all these uh, all these different values and the wind, the temperature, and precipitation. And it will create three charts in this case. Professor? Yeah? Uh, professor, can we repeat using the same variables but uh, different marks? Uh, if you want to use different marks, then you can't do it this way. See here, you only specify mark once. So you might have to, for example, define another way, say repeat mark um, three different values. And here, say the mark, say repeat mark, for example. And I can't remember exactly the same format, either, but it may be possible. So here, basically, you have to define another array for the value of mark, similarly to find an array for the value of row and you give it to the field and you potentially can give a, an array to the value of the mark, then you can have different marks. Okay. <clears throat> so basically you have to find these three values and it's re and repeated here, every time you use a different value. So start with precipitation, temperature and the wind. And this can be more than three. And, and so the actual data set. So we're gonna do that now. Um, so in this case, we don't need this part because we don't have to repeat that anymore. And we don't, we're not gonna have the V concatenate anymore. And instead, Oops, I think uh, that goes and, uh, here. Oops. Mm. Okay, and let me just add the other thing first. So, so just to keep it happy. So I put down repeat. And then repeat the row. I assume potentially I can repeat other things as well. So we can have precipitation, we can have temp max. Have a look at what other things I can use here. 
um, it has um, wind. Okay, we also have wind, so that's fine. We can also do wind here. My role, and then here. So I can't say and spec, uh, so we can't and role. It doesn't work like that. So I have to call this spec. That's my specification for my validation. So it will be a JSON object now. Again, it's not array because it only has one element. Okay, I'm still not happy. Ah, because I need this. Ah, so I could just delete the. Uh, I don't need this extra curly bracket. This level doesn't need anymore. Okay, I set the data. URL is the data. The mark is by encoding X is the time. It's the same. The Y will show you the main. Okay, the only difference will be the field here. Instead of saying the precipitation, we will say repeat. And we're going to repeat the row, which is the row here. Okay, and I think that's it. And if we switch back to the editor, okay, you can see it creates three charts for us now. Uh, the first one is precipitation. The second one is temperature, maximum temperature. And the last one is the main, as the wind. And this calculates on the straight bar chart, and that's the average of all the values over time. Professor, row he mentioned here is just a variable name, right? So if you give something else, it will also still work here in this case, right? Mm -hmm. And or, or is that a uh, compulsory thing we have to give row itself to have I this think, product? Yes, you might have to because the row means each row here. For example, if I call this and just let's say I call it R and I say repeat here, R, okay, and it doesn't recognize, you can see the realization doesn't recognize, it has to be a row. So, so, Professor, if you give it as column, will it show in a horizontal format then? Um, uh, don't think so, because um, we here we are setting the Y. Oh, maybe I can give it a try. The double half triangle column. Okay, yes. can, yeah. It's if you set it at the column, then it just changes horizontally. Okay. So, uh, for example, will this also work for the V concatenate we use, right? If we use H concatenate, does it mean that it will plot it horizontally? Yes, yes. The H concatenate is horizontal concatenation. Okay, got it. <clears throat> okay, and um, so just back here. So this way that allows you to repeat, or basically you don't have to write the same specification three times for these three charts. You only need to say the part you change is the attributes for the y-axis, which you call row, slightly confusing, but you can see each of these takes one row. And that's the precipitation, temperature, and wind. Okay, and you can do even more complicated ones. We already tested the row column there, but here you're setting the repeat for both the column and row. So when you do the repeat, what you end up with is you have multiple rows and multiple columns. It's essentially a matrix and depends on how you set up these temperatures. And if you have three by three, so excuse me, you have three columns and three rows, you have a three by three matrix. And if you have say two columns and three rows, you have a three by two matrix. Okay, so this is make it much easier. Okay, and so we can just we can do something very similar quickly. So we can repeat here, we have the column. Uh, okay. Add a row. 
So, okay, in this particular case, and if you looking carefully, the orders in the column and the row are slightly different. So in this case, in the column, it says temperature, precipitation, and the wind. So hmm? ah, it starts from here, temperature, precipitation, and the wind. And for the road, it's wind, precipitation, and temperature, just opposite. So when you look at this, it's say, then you have this diagonal where it's the same pair of attributes, which is usually how the and scat plot the matrix and works. So here we're gonna just do the opposite order. And okay, and then so here we say okay, and in the y we're gonna repeat the column, and then in the x, I'm gonna just repeat. Okay, and hopefully, oops, it didn't work. So you're trying to plot a bar graph. It should be scatter, right? It should be a point. Uh, Type should not be ordinal. Uh, both the side is categorical value, right? Doesn't... It says line 38. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, so that's the other thing you should do. So for example, if you don't see anything, most likely you have error and open your developer tools and then check for any possible errors that will be in the console. It says uncaught syntax error, unexpected token, a curly bracket on line 38. <clears throat> it actually tells you exactly where it is. It says index.html38. So if you look at your documents, and line 38, we have this error here. Essentially, it's just one extra curly bracket, and which I added here. So it should it shouldn't be two curly bracket here closing, just need the one. Yeah. Uh okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so certainly we sh I should uh, type as ordinal. Yeah, so I probably don't want to aggregate on the y-axis because yes, and we want to scat plot. So the mark would be point. Oh. Hmm? X will type is one in also. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. I need to, yeah, update that part. X. So this one needs to be removed as well. That looks better. Um, so we had this scatter plot matrix, and we have the mm. okay, uh, precipitation. Okay. Precipitation, precipitation, precipitation. Uh, I think I maybe. <clears throat> so I think I probably should do this instead. I need to swap the x and y axis. Hmm. Not exactly as I expected, but something close enough. Um, let me see. Yeah, I would expect to. Okay, and the column will be precipitation, temperature, and wind. And then the rows would be wind, temperature, and precipitation. Uh, and okay, let's see. 
the x axis will be ah okay sorry this should be column and the y should be repeating the row okay that's better and so you can see and um, precipitation temperature wind precipitation temperature and the wind so yeah so the x should always be repeating the column and because for the x each different x value is one column and similarly for the y it should be repeating the row because for each y value and um, it's a row so you have this precipitation versus itself precipitation versus temperature precipitation versus wind and then other things okay so I mean, basically you can see and this way make it much easier to create something quite complex like this and you just need how many lines of code maybe about 20 lines of code that's all you need and plus all these ones we actually don't need anymore. Okay, and finally, and um, you can um, do something called a, and create a, a quite complex uh, dashboard and by combining many different view together using this repeat, concatenate and the layer we talked about before. So, if you want to create something like this, um, you first create these individual view and validations. So this is a stack the bar chart, which can later on turn into this one. You have this um, scatter plot, which will turn into this one using repeat. And then you have these two views. We can join them together and actually first turn into multiple views and using the repeat and then join them together for each view and using the layer so you can add the red line onto the bar chart okay <clears throat> uh, so you, you first and yeah this is using facet so you will turn into a stack bar chart into multiple bar charts and this one using repeat creating this part, the scatter plot matrix, which we just saw before. And this one first, you just join these two together. So using layers. So you draw this red line on top of the bar chart. And all these individual ones we have seen before. Okay. And once you join them together and you do another repeat, and which give you three of these charts. So when you do first layering, you get this one. And then you do the repeat. You can repeat three times. That'll give you something like this. And then for, and the next, we can try to join these together. So first, you join these two together using horizontal concatenate. So I don't think we showed this one. We showed vertical before. So it's just using horizontal concatenate. It will put these two together and one next to the other. And finally, you join the top and bottom together, you probably imagine we can use a vertical concatenate. That's a difficult word to say. And this becomes entire one big validation made up of many, many smaller validations. And you can even add more validations or more, join them together. You can expand as many as you want. If you Okay, and that's it. And that's all we want to talk about in terms of layered and multiple views. Next, we're going to move on to the interaction part. <clears throat> and so first thing I'm going to try is called a selection. And so you can select certain points within a validation. Okay, and from the program point of view, we have three parts in terms of selection. So, and you first have to have the an event processing. So essentially some user interaction would trigger the interselection process. And then you have to know and what has been selected, which data points mark the user interact with. Okay. 
And then finally, you have this predict function. It says what happens once user selected something on the validation. Do you say just change the color of that one or doing more complex things? Okay, and this is the example of showing the car data set. Um, let me see if I have it here. And but I mean, you should be able to get the idea anyway. So we're loading the data set, which is called cars.json, and each car is showing that a circle, so it's not just a point. And in terms of encoding, the X field is horsepower. Uh, its type says Q. Okay, I didn't say you can say maybe that's a shorthand for quantitative. And but the X axis is horsepower, and the Y axis is miles per gallon, which is also quantitative. But it also has color in terms of it shows the original type is nominal, and origin says means basically means where the car is made, and it's either Europe, Japan, or USA. And they give this validation. So, okay. Professor, just citing Q, then quantitative and uh, N for just nominal, that will work as well. Yeah. Probably. And let me see if I can have create this one um, quite quickly. And I need to find the data file, which would be in. Huh. Hmm? Should be somewhere uh, where the car state set. Hold on, give me a second. I'm still looking for the car. Okay, I think I find it in the week 10. Okay. And um, anyway, so let's do this. And I'll just name this cause. Okay, and you can see now I have the car data set, uh, the one we used it before. Um, I probably would create another demo, or HTML file, um, just to make it slightly easier. Um, interaction. And I need to add these files. So this will be in my head section. And to say bigger light demo. So including these files. So that's my head section. That should be okay. And then I have a div with a hashtag called this. And then I have the script. Okay, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to define a variable via spec. Okay, and after the default... So, Professor, one more doubt. Uh, so, always the variable inside script has to be VLSEP or it can be any other name and we yeah, call yeah, this yeah, uh, in the week alike in the end. Yeah, it can be anything. Uh, you can call the variable name, it can be anything. I just maybe call it spec. Okay, okay. Uh, so everywhere, every time you're using VL specs, that's why I just asked to confirm. No, no. Yeah, that's just conventions that short, short for VGALI specification. Oh, okay. You don't have to. Uh, I need the VGA in bed, I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> and then you need to do this. Okay, I'll do that first and um, just to say and this is the hashtag viz plus in this case we're gonna use spec. Okay, and so far we don't have anything in the validation yet, so we have to type in say here data. 
uh, we call this thing the CSV file. That's the one we have. Yeah, cars.csv, that's the one we have. Uh, mark will be circle, okay. Holding and uh, the X uh, field would be horsepower. I just make sure I use exactly the same name. Ah, uh, let me see what it's called. Who? HP professor. There is a column called HP. Engine size. After that, HP. yeah, HP. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, it just called HP. <laughs> see if the Q works. Why is field would be miles per gallon? Again, that to just double check. Uh, it's probably called a city MPG instead of miles per gallon. It does have a single attribute, it's called. Okay, uh, let's just call it. I have to make sure it's exactly the same. Capital C, city, MPG, capital. Okay. Also quantitative. And then, uh, <clears throat> just the color. Professor, we don't have a variable in that data called origin. Oh, really? Uh, no. Hmm. Actually, we don't have any quantitative attributes at all. Hmm. Okay, then the color, well, we actually need this. Uh, Okay, let me see if I can get the data quite quickly. From the VegaLite website. Uh, GitHub, yeah. No, not this one. Um, Okay, I think this is the one we all need. Uh, I can just cause. Huh? I can't just download this one directly. So I think I find the file. Um, Why well, does allow me just to download the file? Okay, I'll just use the raw and save. Uh, we'll be here. No. <clears throat> okay, so now I should have cars.json here now. Now that we have the exact same as one choosing an example. So it will be called uh, power. Just copy over just to make sure I got the right thing. I don't want to miss time. Miles per gallon. And finally, uh, build. Oh, right. Uh, this is origin. We have origin. Yes, we do. Yeah. It would be origin. The type would be oh, 
Okay, let's see who this would work. What's the data? You haven't changed the data to cast or yes, it is CSV <clears throat> oh, yes, file. Yes. Of course, yeah. Very good point. Cast or JSON. And then we go back here. Uh, so that's the raw file. We don't need any more. And here it was still showing the index file. I need to change this one uh, because this is a named interaction.html. Yay! We have it now. Okay. And so we had the validation, which should be the same as we saw here. Ah. The color is a bit different, I think. The color scheme is slightly different. And so the here, um, it say, uh, <clears throat> it gives the US green here is it's red and Japan here is orange, still orange and Europe is blue. So the only difference is now the USA is red instead of green, but I think that's okay. I think you could change this if you really want, but that's not the key thing here. Now we're going to do the actual interaction part. Oh. Okay, and because we're talking about selection, and so the thing we want to use is selection and actual event we thought about. The first thing is you need to specify and the type of interaction user will do. And so this case, we can just say picked. That essentially means when user click on a data point, and we pick only a single point. That's why I say the type simple is here. And then you say what you're gonna do once user did something. So you say, we're gonna change the color so <clears throat> you say the color, it says condition selection, when it's not picked, its value would be gray, okay? So that essentially means everything by default will be gray because you add this condition. And then when the user picked something, in this case, you can only pick and it will select a single data point and that will change color. So this is what you will see here on this side. And so what we're gonna do, we'll first try to add this one. And then as a result, everything is gonna be gray because nothing is picked. So this will be inside the, the color. A condition when it's not picked, the value okay, it says. When it's not picked, it will be gray. And if I say, oops, again, and has nothing shown up now. Uh, Professor, you haven't mentioned the picked variable. Hmm, maybe you'll have to. I will just check and what it complains about. Okay, and cannot find a selection name called picked. So you do, yeah, you have to have the other part. I was hoping to see if we can just get um, a gray display. No, so I have to add here. So I say selection picked type. I need a comma here. Okay, now it should work. Okay, and so we have these just by default. And then if I click any of these, it will change color to what it's supposed to be. Okay, and maybe slightly, not that easy to see there, but it's a little bit bigger. And if you click, 
you can see they get colored. Okay. And because we said single, so if you click something else, the previous one would, and the color will be removed because you're only selecting one point at a time. Okay. But, <clears throat> and if you don't want that behavior, for example, you want the behavior instead of, you will keep everything that you selected so far, and the only difference you have to make and is to make type now into multiple. So this allows you to select multiple points. So I'm going to type. Again, it doesn't like it. It was multi, it was not multiple. Ah, okay, yeah. Let me try. Console. Uh, this is slightly less informative. Multi. Okay. And. Uh, mm. Ooh, no, the multi doesn't quite work. It's still like single. And pick the type equal to multi. Huh. It should work. Yeah, and an interaction pick the type equal to multi. I'm not sure why it's not working. Console. That's all okay, and nothing too serious. Hmm. Okay, let me just restart this one. Nope, <clears throat> I don't know. I think we followed the examples, but I'm sure why not. This one is not working. And anyway, uh, don't really have time to figure that out now. And then the last one is saying, this is to make it even easier to select one. And it says, now you can say, instead of how to click everything, you can just using mouse over instead of click, which is the default behavior. And I doubt it's gonna be selecting multiple things, but at least when I mouse over the points, um, it will change the color. Okay. So you can see now, and as I mouse over point, I'm not clicking anything. And you can see the points, the color would change it just as my mouse over. So the mouse over part is work. And, but the multi part is not working anymore. Okay, and just like quickly recap. So these are the three things. And first, and you need to decide <clears throat> which event and you want to trigger the interaction. So it either can be click or mouse over. We should see these, the default is click, so you don't have to say that. And then you need to define what will be selected. And in this case, we only select the pawn that the mouse over. We'll see more examples later on. It can be more complex than that. And then finally, you decide what will happen and with the things you selected. Okay, and as I said, in, 
here it's quite straightforward. We only selected the one which is mouse over or clicked, but we can be and select other things. Okay. Okay, so for this one, and we're gonna change this the things a little bit now. So when we picked with a type of single, let's you pick a single one, but the here we say fills cylinder. So what it does is you will pick all the data points which has the same number of cylinders as the one you picked. So you pick the car, and then we we'll try to select all the cars with the same number of cylinders. So that's what happens here. So you select the car, there's multiple other cars got selected. They have the same number of cylinders. Okay. Uh, so this would have been, why well, jumped into the previous one. So type would be single, multi doesn't work anyway. And then the fields. Uh, okay. Ah, so the fields here, so you can select for multiple fields. So that's why you have this curly bracket here, which is what I did here. And uh, so here we're only selecting one attribute, but you can select more. Hopefully this would work. Okay. And actually I can uh, leave the previous one alive as well. So that I click the car, and all the cars with the same number of cylinders get highlighted up. And I click another one. Okay, so all these cars have same number of cylinders, have quite high power, firepower, sorry, horsepower, similar range of miles per gallon, except for these ones. These are the other ones. And uh, actually, I can even say type it. I forgot now. Uh, the previous slides. Let's try. I'll keep this one. Uh, um, mouse over. So in, in so this case, I don't need to select. Okay, so I can just move mouse, and we select the same. Cars. If I move the mouse, you can. Okay, so all these are. You can see easily see. Say most of these cars are made in American with high number of uh, gallon cylinders, high horsepower, low miles per gallon. Okay. So here we're not just selecting a single points. Now we use we use that to select um, the things with the same number of cylinders. <clears throat> okay, and you can actually also bind this to a slider, something like this, and then you can set the values as well. Use either of those. So you can either move this, which changes this, or you can change the cylinder, change the uh, slider to change the selection here. Okay, and you can have multiple ones, okay. So we're gonna just do the first one, which only has one. One slider allows you to change and the link will be bind to the 
selections on the page. So we have the field, which is still cylinders, type is single. Okay, and then we add another one called bind. Input, okay, this is, input can be different type of HTML elements. In this case, it will be range. Range, which decides that will be a slider like this. And the minimum value will be three and can set other values as well. Okay, and now we have the cylinders here. Oh, that's right. Okay, maybe I want to put, let's say, uh, what will be the eight, maybe 12. Uh, this is slightly, uh, this is less than ideal because now you have these um, eight point something, which certainly does not exist. But certainly you can see if I change this one to eight, then all these eight and cylinder cars get lighted up. I change to six or six ones, or I can move this one here and you can see the cylinder changes as I move. So these are all the four cylinder ones. That's the six cylinder one, six, and these are the eight, six, etc. Okay, um, <clears throat> so you can actually have more. In this case, <clears throat> you can have two sliders. Uh, one, the other one binds to the year, and then you can have the range from the 1967 to something else. And in this case, only to find the minimum. And here you also have to change, including the year here inside the fields as well. Okay, uh, so through the cylinder. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So here, uh, cylinder itself has to be, have a separate settings for each of these attributes. Input eight. Might be slightly nicely. Then have the year. The input range. So range again gives you the slider, the minimum. I don't know what the minimum value is. So I'll just draw an example here. Nineteen sixty-seven. Ah, now. Ooh. Oh. This cylinder does not. Nineteen ninety. No. Ah. Is that because of the? Ah, uh, okay. And so here, the year is not a number, and it's actually year, month, and date. And. Uh, so the processing here is not. Actually, Professor, the year is the slider and the cylinder is the text edit one, according to this. Sorry? So the year is the slider one, right? Yeah. And the cylinder is the text thing. Oh, that's right, sorry. No, the year is not working either. But I think the, the problem was caused by the year. And because the year in the data set, <clears throat> it's actually not a number. It says 1970 and 0101. Zero one. Um, yeah. And obviously when we tried cylinder before it was working, if we only have this, uh, Got this part. Ah, now this doesn't work either. Hmm. 
Okay. Ah, maybe. Oh, did I miss something? So I think maybe that's the array here causing the problem. Even more errors. Okay. Uh, so obviously, the examples is not quite working if you have multiple ones. So if you take out everything else, I'm just going back to what it was like before. Ah, oh, that's a few three ones hiding there. Okay. Mm. So there might be some changes now. So the uh, the second selection doesn't quite work. <clears throat> okay, and this should be okay. And the next one is so okay. Instead of selecting single one, and we're going to using a next one, which is a region, and it's called type, called interval. In this case, we can have a two D interval, so both the x and the y, which you can then drag. Okay, uh, let's just do this, try this one first. That should, this should work. So we don't need the bind anymore. Uh, we need the selection type. In this case, we're gonna do interval. Okay, and then we don't do any type or the fields. We just select everything that's in the interval. Okay, so we should be able to and then move the interval around. Yeah, so this is part is working fine. Okay, and similarly, and you can also change the encoding. So previously you can say, well, I select the point, but actually I really, I really want is just a cylinder. <clears throat> Here it says, I have interval, but I really want care is just the X range. So I'm gonna just say the, I want to select the X range, okay? Which will give you something like this, allows you to select only the X and not the Y axis. Yeah, uh, yeah just here. And say it's encoding. Professor, mm -hmm. isn't there a difference between um, picked and grid? <clears throat> oh, that's true. Mm. So it should be, should be using grid, but it seems the the pick that still works. I didn't, I forgot to update that. Type is single. <clears throat> okay, well spotted. Let's just to see this. Okay, now it's not working. Uh, let's see. Mm. For the selection part, also we have to change the pick to, to the grid and the y-axis. So, sorry, and which what did I miss? In the bottom, in, in the, the bottom, bottom selection. In the condition section, in the y, uh, the color section. Nine thirty-two. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, okay. 
So is it just a name then? <clears throat> so potentially it could be just a name then, so long as you match. Okay. Seems if I just say it's picked, it doesn't encoding should be X. Right. No. Uh, still doesn't work. Still only work as an interval and not the encoding part. Be a capital X or small X. Uh, encoding session. Be small X. So be small X. Okay. So what it expected to be is actually now you're selecting the X axis instead of the. Let me just quickly check. Um, fields. Okay. Um, if I. Potentially, I can maybe do something similar. I doing fields horsepower and so what this is I can when I select I can actually just select the horsepower which is the x axis let me see if this would work oh, it doesn't even work Okay, maybe it does not allow you to use something like this. Fields inside the grid. Um, what does it say? So picked will be okay, but uh, here, the encoding. Work. No, do not. X. Mm, still not. Yeah, and um, I'll probably have to figure out exactly how I'm covering the next week. Okay, let's just unfinish the this part under the encoding uh, binding to. Okay, so this is again a slightly different um, variation. So it says encoding is access, but now you're not and uh, changing the selection. Now you're actually moving the access itself. That's what these bind scales means. So that's what you see here, where you can see. You're actually moving the x-axis or zooming zoom out instead of making a selection. Let me see if this would work at all. And okay, and so the binding of the scales actually still works. So this is not just X and both X and Y. So I can move left to right. You can see the scales where I move. And if I do up and down the Y axis moves.
Okay. Um, I think we'll stop there now and we can run a little bit of the time. We still have a few slides we're going to cover or finish in the next lecture. And also in the next lecture, we're going to talk about the requirements for the next individual work. And uh, later on in this week's lab, which is on Thursday, and we're going to introduce the next group work. And uh, both of these actually are already available online. If you want to, you can have a look. But obviously, I'm going to talk more about them in the lecture and the lab later. Professor, are these um, works are some formative or summative? No, they are all marked work. So you all, <clears throat> they are all summative. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If this is no. I just got a quick question. Um, yeah. I know the class is about to finish, but you don't have to answer now. I just want to know, um, you know, in the data sets you'll be using, 